It's a compilation from the different ayahs of the Quran where we learn how to cure ourselves according to Quran and Sunnah. We already did part one and this is part two. Let's begin with the dua. Nahmaduhu nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma baad fawz billahi min ash-shaytan rajim bismillah rahman rahim So we were doing about envy and evil eye. Evil eye comes from a resentful and male violent envy that is manifested by casting a gaze, stare or look that is envious and ill-wishing and envy causes harm or misfortune to an unsuspecting person. through his eyes without needing his hands or tongue the intensity of the effect differs according to the weakness of the victim and the power of the envious jealousy hatred and anger messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the evil eye is true it's a haq it's a fact it's going to happen if anything could uh, outdo the decree it would be the evil eye and this is in muslim he also said sallallahu alaihi wasallam the evil eye is true it can cause a mountain to collapse this is in ahmad and also he said most of those who die among my ummah do so after the will and the decree of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the evil eye how to protect oneself from evil eye recite the sunnah morning and evening askar and also here we learn ibn al qayyim wrote the evil eye is like an arrow shot by the one who is jealous hitting the victim sometimes and missing it sometime so the victim is uncovered and without the protection of the asgar and then he definitely will be affected by it but if the victim is taking precaution through the asgar then it will not affect him rather it may happen that this arrow is returned back to the envier like you are doing morning evening askar you are very regular in your salah and so on so forth and also we should remember say mashallah on one owns blessing and possessions see blessings from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala example barakallahu feekum lakum alaykum prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever amongst you sees something in himself or in his possessions or in his brother that he likes let him pray for the blessings for it because the evil eye is the real this is in hakim to avoid dangerous and way a believer should be kind courteous to people uh, salam should be spread salam is like a greeting and peace and gift should be given to the families and friends displaying lofty manners will be dispel the jealousy of the others and remove evil desires from their hearts when uh, talking about gifts to giving the family sometimes you know we ignore our family and give more gifts to the friends that is not right because family has the haq family has two rights because they are blood relative and also allah love to whom we give the gift conceal your good do not share or spread any good news about yourself except to those who rejoice at your good fortune because if you are no, uh, sure about the uh, family who will be happy like it may be immediate family sometimes in your own siblings if they have less and they sometimes go into the complex or sometimes it is better to hide because if you um, say something which may hurt their feelings and they may feel that if they don't have that thing they may feel bad so uh, you have to be careful when to what to say and this may even include families and relatives since it can be those closest to you whose envy can cause you the most harm messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said resort to concealing the fulfillment and success of your needs for really everyone endowed with the blessing is envied tabrani messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Complicated with the following words for his companion, who was afflicted with the evil eye. Allahum azhib anhu harraha wa bardaha wa was wa wa wasabaha. This is in Ahmad seeking protection for children. Since young children are unable to recite rukhya, parents should always recite Ayatul Kursi and three Qul Surahs, and also make sure your children learn it and they do do themselves. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to seek Allah's protection for Hasan and Hussein radhiyallahu anhum by saying uizukuma bi kalimatillahi tamati min kulli shaytani wa hama wa min kulli aynin lama this is in bukhari how to treat the evil eye the 
evil eye is very common. E Imam Ahmad said, rarely, rarely will a house be found without anyone being affected by the evil eye or jealousy. The method of treatment is to get used water of the one who inflicted the evil eye. But is it possible these days? First of all, we don't know who affected who, who did the evil like because sahaba ikram they were very like you know open mind and they used to share the things and if something is there they will definitely they, they say it but we we are not sure who is uh, doing the evil eye and so on so forth for sure we can't say anything about it that uh, whoever affected they will take the shower and that water will be used for your shower but that is uh, quite uh, difficult though so here you can do like using the mawazatain and reciting ayatul kursi and that way also you can cure yourself, cure yourself. It will take a couple of days, it may be 10 to 20 days until the symptoms disappears. The dangers of social media, already I discussed a few matters in part one. Why I am repeating this? Because this is spreading like anything, you know, social media has become an integral part of today's life. Unfortunately, it has made us much vulnerable to evil eye. We should be wary of posting pictures of ourselves, our position, our children on the social media. Similarly, we should not wistfully gaze at the blessings of others and envy them for it. We should reflect on how using social media affect of our health, family, relations, spiritually and ultimately our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I notice we are spreading so much like even what we eat and what we are doing, we are sharing each and everything. Sometimes we are roaming around, we are going somewhere and you share that picture and people that envious with you and you, you fell sick. So many things are there. It's not effective in a positive manner. It's a negative manner. And already it's there in Quran and Sunnah not to do such kind of things. How, how to stop envying others, saying, MashaAllah, Barakallah, fi. If something pleases you, give gifts and do good to those whom you envy. Praises them when you wish to criticize. Make dua for them, even if reluctant to do so. Know how deadly envy is and how it will only return to harm you. Be content with what Allah's decree. Like, you know, the third thing, the last three surahs of the Quran, you can recite those surahs and your shield, the last three surahs of the Quran uh, and the strongest protection against uh, evil eye, magic and jinn in its uh, sunnah to read them three times in the morning and evening. Three times before going to sleep, once after salah, one when is ill, this shows their importance. These surahs are extremely effective in repelling magic, evil eye and the rest of the evils. Ibn al-Qayyim, the need for a slave to seek Allah's protection with these surahs is greater than his need for eating, drinking and clothes. Ibn al-Qayyim, magic and jinn. So the chapter starts from magic and jinn. So we did in part one a couple of the things and it's there in the playlist. If you miss it, you can just go and look at the, you know, cure of uh, through Rukhiya. Uh, the title is Rukhiya. Jinn are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are not visible to human beings. Like humans, there are good and evil jinns. Evil jinns are also known as shayateen, plural of shaitan. They assist the magicians and envyers in bringing harm to humans by seeking protection with one who created them. We need not fear jinns. Aital Kursi is the strongest protection against the evil of jinn. Other Quranic verses which mention the greatness of Allah for his punishment are also effective. Ibn Kasir Rahmatullah said the most beneficial cure for magic is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No seeker has sought protection with anything like them. This is mentioned in Abu Dawud. Likewise, one ought to recite Ayatul Kursi as it repels shaitan. And the azan can also be read uh, in the ear or on, uh, in the home or anyone who is affected by the jinns. Really, it helps you a lot. And then, Additional treatment for magic and jinn. Carry out the Rukhiya method outlined. 
long sight, the Rukhya ayah, one should read Surah Al-Baqarah as Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever recites Surah Al-Baqarah, Shaitan will flee away and uh, magic can't take place. So take a Rukhya, bath with cedar water, grind even green cedar leaves. Cedar leaves, if you Google it, you'll get it and online you can order and get it yourself and it will help you it is from loaded tree leaves and soak them in the water recite rukia on its mixture take three sips from it and then bathe with the remaining water this method has been mentioned by ibn hajar who quotes wahhab bin munabbi rahmatullah as having mentioned this this process can be repeated daily until one is cured by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here let me explain you this cedar leaves you can order it when you get the cedar leaves what you have to do you have to recite this like you have to mix it in the water sometimes you know some people they uh, they bring it and uh, they grind it and some people uh, they mix it in the water some people what they do they make a like a, how you make uh, tea instead of uh, boiling the tea powder uh, or tea bags you are uh, putting the cedar leaves and boiling it and cedar leaves when you drink that uh, cedar water uh, it will uh, you know uh, cleanse your uh, stomach or whatever the if like you know you swallowed the black magic thingy or some may, somebody may mixed in something and you made it drink that will uh, be taken out from your tummy you understand when you had that drink but before that um, you know you bring that and uh, uh, keep everything ready like olive oil water and um, like uh, sana leaves cedar leaves or sana leaves you can look for sana leaves also it's the same thing and uh, uh, you know different lotions what you want to use it keep it and make sure that open the lid when you recite the rukhya and drink sana water Sana should be boiled in the water and left to cool. It's not like you're drinking it hot. You know, when you are reciting Rukhya, that time you have to keep all this thing ready. Honey can be added to this mixture. Rukhya should be recited on this mixture and then drink on empty stomach first thing in the morning. This can be done for seven days. As I mentioned before, 3, 7, 11, your, your wish, or 9 and also you can do uh, cupping, hijama, especially on the parts of the body that are in pain. This can be repeated as necessary. Rub oil on the head and the body. You can keep the oil also. Whatever the things like, you know, I'll mention olive oil. Some people, they use co coconut oil and different lotions, shampoo, whatever the things you can do the rupiah and keep it. But there's nothing wrong in it and you can use it for yourself. And especially the sana leaves, you're boiling the water and keeping it. If you didn't boil it, just you got the sana leaves, you, you made the rukhya and then later you want to boil. But better to boil the water and keep it, let it cool down and you did the rukhya and you can drink it later on. You can keep in the fridge, that's okay. You can keep and drink daily and rub oil on the head and the body. Rukhya can be recited over olive oil or any kind of oil you are using. But olive oil is beneficial, which can be rubbed over the body, especially parts that are in pain. Sometimes some people, their chest pain, sometimes they they have back pain, sometimes they have a stomach, they, their tummy hurts. As I told you, you're going to drink that sana leaves for seven days, like a, like a uh, kind of a tea you're going to make. And uh, make sure you drink it first thing in the morning and that will cleanse your tummy like you will have a kind of diarrhea kind of thing so that whatever you swallowed it will come out through your uh, stool and your bowel will be cleansed applying all oil on the head a sunnah of prophet wasalam, is extremely effective drinking a spoon of olive oil daily is also beneficial black seed that is so important habbatul sauda it is called can be used in similar manner individual effect play uh, afflicted by magic can often feel overwhelmed when thinking about it much to the delight of magician and evil jinns it is vital however that a victim remains optimistic one should never become despondent uh, or think that uh, they are incurable rather one, one must think highly of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a firm hope in him what are the prophetic uh, uh, medicine we should uh, think about the prophetic medicine what we can do let's see the prophetic medicine black seed indeed black seed is like you know it has a cure 
so we we were doing the um, cure about black magic how to cure from Quran and Sunnah. Here we are learning about prophetic medicine, like a black seed and also zamzam, -zam, um, cupping, senna leaves, black seed. Indeed, in black seed is a cure for all diseases except Sam. Sam means death. This is narrated in Muslim. Regarding cupping, Jibreel uh, Amin informed that cupping is the most beneficial medicine for the people. Uh, this is in Hakim. Cupping should be done 13, 14 and 15th of the lunar calendar date. But you should go and make sure when it is possible and uh, adjust the date and cupping is really beneficial for you. Zamzam, the water of Zamzam is for whatever it is drunk for beneficial for you. This is in Ibn Majah, the best water upon the surface of the earth is zamzam -zam water it is a nourishing food uh, and a cure for illness this is in tabrani like you know uh, if you are on zamzam -zam water for couple of days then also you're going to survive because it is so beneficial for your health and when you drink zamzam -zam water and make dua allah will listen to you make dua with your intensity because you are in pain allah knows your intensity and pain sana make good use of sana leaves honey there is a cure in both of them for every disease except Sam means except death. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what is Sam? He replied, death. Ibn Maja. No man fills a container worse than your stomach. A few morsels that keep his back upright are sufficient. We, we eat so much. We fill our tummy so much. We overeat. So if he has to, then he should keep one third for food, one third for drink, one third for breathing. So if you keep one third empty, there is nothing wrong in it. People now they started doing the, you know, dieting kind of thing. And sometimes they, they say, oh, I'm on a, a diet, I'm on a GMO diet, I'm on a keto diet, I'm on a veg diet, so on and so forth. Actually, what is the Sunna way? We should keep one third empty for breathing. Make it an intention if you are even though you are doing this kind of uh, this kind of dieting, but renew your intention. You renew your intention like one third as a sunnah where you want to uh, have food, one third, one third drink, and one third breathing because water has an essential role in our body. Many people they don't drink water. If you drink enough water, that is so beneficial for your health and. Uh, uh, also, essence, you know, you call it agarbati in uh, Indian language or al-khust al-hindi or al-khust al-bahri. Treat with the Indian essence for it heals seven diseases. It's to be sniffed by one experiencing throat trouble and to be put in one side of the mouth of one suffering from pleurisy. If this is in Bukhar, the best medicine you may treat yourself without cupping and sea essence, ajwa dates. Whoever eats seven ajwa dates in morning, either magic, poison will harm him that day. He will, it will not affect you. This is in Bukhari. Even if a snake is biting or you had by mistake drank the poison. But if you had seven dates, seven ajwa dates in the morning, nothing can affect you. This is in Bukhari. Albina, a barley broth. Aisha Radia Lanha used to recommend it, Albina. For the sick, for the bereaved. She used to say, I heard Allah's Messenger وسلم, saying, Talbina brings comfort to a sick person, heart and relieves some of their sorrow and grief. Honey, there emerges from their bellies, honey bees, drinking varying in colors in which there is healing for people. This is in Surah Al-Nahal, Ayah number 69. Honey, but make sure you, you drink the honey first thing in the morning and that too, organic one not the you know which has more sugar in it the things which are common question can anyone do ruhya or is it only for certain people q a what are the let's see different q a so here uh, we are regarding ruhya what are the different q a can anyone do ruhya or is it only for certain people? There is a misconception that ruhya is exclusively to certain individual. Ruhya can one should be performed by every Muslim. 
is reciting ruqya better than listening to it one should recite themselves if they can do so in the proper manner however ruqya may be need to be done for long periods of time one may be unable to recite for such duration one can therefore listen to ruqya audio or have someone recite over them you know your recitation is not good or your recitation is good but reciting longer longer time make you feel tired first and foremost recite yourself if you can't then ask your own family members to recite if you if they can't even their recitation is not good or they get tired or they don't have time listen to the nice qari either by wearing the headphones if you are not wearing headphones give time and listen it carefully spend time on it how long should the ruqya be recited or listen listen to ruqya for few hours a day again and again at least start from 30 minutes then exceed to 1 hour depending on your condition ideally one should stop other activities focus on the ruqya until they get better this may take few days sometimes it may take longer time or shorter time there is no thing like quickly you know it will take some time depending on the severity illness magic evil eye all the thing next thing reciting or listening to ruqya is not making a difference you know reciting or listening to ruqya is not making difference then one should question their yaqeen conviction and niya intention one should also do istighfar seeking forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa taala as there may be a sin which is preventing allah subhanahu wa taala help istighfar opens all closed doors but closely examine is there anything wrong maybe something maybe pictures in your home maybe some pet maybe the like uh, dirt or some filled in your home sometimes what happens because of the pets smell is there in your home and smell will not allow angels to enter the home and intention matters like you you are putting the charms and you know taawis and all those things remove all those things and uh, one should do istighfar even though these are the things not there why it is not happening allah knows what is preventing maybe you grab somebody's right or maybe something is wrong allah knows best do istighfar istighfar will open all closed doors how does one know if they are inflicted with a evil eye the best gauge for knowing whether what is afflicted is the quran nothing can hide from the powerful and supreme words of allah subhanahu wa taala one may feel pain while reciting or listening to ruqya you know when you are reciting or listening to the ruqya one may also feel restless or scared other symptoms may include itching vomiting diarrhea fever sweating urge to urinate feeling sleepy if these symptoms arise continue reciting or listening to ruqya especially the ayah that exacerbate these symptoms you know if you are listening ayah again and again for example you are listening to surah al fatiha again and again and you it make your Uh, cases more worse then listen and listen inshallah gradually you will improve like you know itching or vomiting it's good if it is vomited it means something is coming out sometimes it may happen diarrhea sometimes you are feverish you are sweating a lot or you are urinating feeling very sleepy these are the symptoms the person afflicted uh, refuses to recite you know if he or she is bewitched they refuse to recite the ruqya even they don't pray regularly and they are very lazy and lethargic one who does not want to listen to ruqya should be compelled as shaitan is stopping them from seeking treatment if it's still difficult then one can recite on their behalf blow on the water and oil the afflicted person should be made to drink and use this you know the person afflicted refuse to recite or listen to the ruqya so what should you do one who does not want to listen or ruqya should be forced because shaitan is stopping him or her from seeking treatment 
if it is still difficult then one can recite on their behalf blow on the water and oil make them drink and apply that oil and all the things as i mentioned before sana leaves everything make sure they drink and have it should illness be treated with ruqya only magic and evil i can often cause physical illness underline this magic and evil i can often causes physical illness these needed to be treated medically alongside the ruqya it can be any kind of medical condition whether cancer brain tumor any kind of disease you have to go uh, through the treatment and it is quite possible it started with spiritually then it occupied physically sometimes some people they have hole in their heart but first it start with the spiritual then they had hole, hole in their heart they have to go through the surgery so along with the conventional medicines one should adopt a healthy lifestyle implement the sunna prescription of eating less but more wholesome food you know people they have bad habit of taking junk food nice good food consumption and means to obtain it should be halal after ruqya one may feel weak eating foods which are high in energy including talbina barley por- porridge is therefore helpful one most important thing when you are taking anything eating or drinking make sure you say bismillah many times it happens because you are not saying bismillah you are consuming the things but still you are empty stomach you are not uh, getting the food in your tummy is there any specific ayah in the quran that have more impact yes of course it can be the quran has any ayahs of quran, um, ruqya the strongest are surah al fatiha ayat al kursi and last three surahs of the quran that is surah al ikhlas surah al falaq and nas listen to this for hours if possible make sure you take out time and spend more time over there if certain ayas are elicit greater symptoms then these should be repeated at least seven times if possible one can also add other ayas which mention greatest and oneness of allah such as Uh, surah number 2 ayah number 164 surah number 3 ayah number 18 surah number 7 ayah number 54 surah number 23 ayah number 118 surah number 72 ayah number 3 surah number 37 ayah number 1 to 10 surah number 59 ayah number 24 suratul mulk and suratul rahman please note down you can pause and listen again and make sure you do it so do the following Uh, sunna morning and evening azkar help the morning and evening azkar sunna remembrance after fajr prayer so does morning and evening azkar help in ruqya yes the morning and evening azkar sunna remembrance after fajr and asar are the best means of protecting from evil eye magic and other affliction if someone is already afflicted then these askar should also be read along with the ruqya treatment morning and evening askar are highly recommended should never be abandoned one who is cured by ruqya will always remain exposed to evil affliction if they neglect these askar never ever neglect your askar so next thing why next thing we learn why should one blow after reciting ruqya blowing with saliva is an important part of the ruqya this physical element should not be underestimated as ibn al qayyim explained in zad al maad blowing is done by both pure and evil soul as allah subhanahu wa taala said from the evil of the blowers in the nords min sharri nafasati fil uqad 
Surah number 113 and number 4. So those who do magic tie knots and blow onto them words of magic, mixing them with the saliva which work on the victims even in their absence. However, the pure souls counter this by blowing with the powerful words of the Quran. This is because the pure soul and the majestic words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will overcome and destroy this magician, evil jinns and envirers. So the next thing we learn about what is a Rukhiya bath. A Rukhiya bath is where one baths in water that has been recited upon. Whistle reciting Rukhiya over the water. One should keep their mouth close to the water, breathe into the water and repeatedly blow over it. Bath should be done daily for positive results. For more severe affliction, daily bath should continue until symptoms subside. And this Rukhiya bath, make sure you have the regular bath. After that, whatever the Rukhiya you re read and keep the things like, you know, those sana leaves, oil, all those things and that water, the reading Rukhiya water, that water you're going to use on your body. But make sure first you have the regular bath because that will remove your filth. And now just you are passing the water from head to toe and collect that water in some container and throw in the garden. Make sure that you do. So having complete uh, reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Rukhiya, this is so important. Abdullah bin Ab Abbas uh, said, one day I was behind Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa on the camel. He said to me, son, I will teach you some words. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be mindful of you. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will find him in front of you. When you ask, then ask Allah. When you seek help, then seek help from Allah. Know that if the nation gathered together to benefit you with something, they would only benefit you with something that Allah has already written. Means what Allah has written, only that will benefit. Nation can't benefit you. If they gather together to harm you with something, they would only harm you with something that Allah had already written against you. The pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. This is in Tirmidhi. Means we should believe in the Qadr. Whatever is written in our Taqdeer, in our Qadr, that will happen. So we should try and tie the camel, we should do the uh, Rukhya, we should completely do with the conviction and do the Tawakkul al Allah, reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leave it on Allah. But have complete faith on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah wills, you will be cured. If you are not cured in this world for some reason, Allah knows best, maybe in that um, spiritual disease, you will get cleansed because people who is doing deliberately, they will be in loss in this world and in the hereafter. It's hard though, but you should have complete tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So next topic is about prevention is better than cure. This is about Rukhya. How the prevention is better than cure in Rukhya? The deadly effects of envy, evil eye, magic, jinn are very common today. To safeguard ourselves, we should adhere to the methods of protection by shown by Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Say Bismillah before undressing, entering the bathroom because a screen from jinn. This is in Tabrani. Mentioning the name of Allah when entering the house and eating. You know, when you enter the house, you say Bismillah, you enter it, Shaitan won't enter. Shaitan will be outside only. Shaitan cannot spend the night in your home, nor can he uh, partake in your meal. You know, you are not saying Bismillah and eating. Shaitan will be eating it instead of you. Even when you are closing the windows and doors, say Bismillah. Pray Fajr in congregation. One is in the protection of Allah. This is in Tabrani. Bismillahi tawakkaltu ala la wa la hawli wa la quwata illa billah. Then leaving the house. This is a source of guidance and protection. And devils cannot get to you. Abu Dawood. And la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa la kulli shayin qadhi. Saying hundred times in the day. 
you will be safe guarded against the shaitan on the day till the evening if you say this 100 times in the morning you are safe till the evening if you say evening you are safe uh, till the next morning so this will no evil eye no jinn no kind of magic will affect you what else Ten times saying La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu almulku wa lahu alhamdu yuhyi wa yumit wa huwa la kulli shayin kadi. Only two words are different in this. Rest is the same. Reciting ten after fajr and maghrib, it will be shield for you against all repulsive things, and you will be guarded against the shaitan. This is in Ahmad. And what else? Saying Ayat al Kursi Allahu la ilaha morning and evening and before sleeping. protection from the jinn this is in bukhari and tabrani saying all the qul qul huwa allah wa and suratul falaq suratul nas and suratul ikhlas all three times in the morning and evening it will suffice you in all respect this is in tirmidhi what else bismillahil ladhi la yadurru ma asmi shay'in fil ardi wa la fis samai huwa samiul alim three times in the morning three times in the evening it is there in the morning and evening askar na thing will harm you this is intermedi what else amana rasulu bima unzila the last verses of surah al baqara 285 and 286 you should recite before sleeping don't forget this will suffice you this is in the bukhari hasbi allah this is in morning evening azkar and make sure you recite it this is in abu daud hasbi allah la ilaha illa huwa alayhi tawakkaltu wa rabbil arsh alazim this is in abu daud this are the last verses of surah at tauba how many times you have to recite seven and all the azkar i mentioned whether it's three or seven times if you want to recite you should recite odd number of times seven or five or nine or three times اعوذ بكلمات الله تامات من شر ما خلق how many times three times you will be protected from insect things all this jazak allah khairan kaseera may allah protect us all this was the ruqya sharia through quran and sunna way you can cure yourself by the will of allah you will be cured make sure that whatever we learn you try to do yourself you don't have to go to any priest or any baba you spend time there and you waste time you waste your energy and waste your money and above all most important is your aqeedah you are corrupting your aqeedah we shouldn't corrupt our aqeedah the islamic monotheism is so important for all of us may allah protect us all if you have any questions regarding this ruqya sharia or anything if you are affected or so on so forth please do ask me question because i already completed a book called sword against black magic by abdul salam bali inshallah i'll add it to the playlist jazakallah khairan kaseera subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta